Brenda Lee, Elvis, Marty Robbins, and he only looks a little like Sonny Bono on that. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. These are just fun. Now, they're not usually worth a whole lot of money, but if you want to go back in time and see what the scuttlebutt about your favorite vintage movie stars and starlets were, and various other folks like Ethel Kennedy. Well, these are the places you'd find that. They have a bunch of different magazines here. Arizona Highways sometimes has some good artists in it. You know, magazines are a whole area of their own in terms of what's collectible and what's not, but they're all a lot of fun because it definitely shows you what people were thinking of back then. Eddie compares Connie and Liz as wives and lovers. Well, Eddie should have kept his mouth shut. At least Liz Taylor thought so. Well, we know I like my bookends, and these are horses. I like western motif. But what I really like about these is you turn the back, they've got felt, but it's older red felt. It has some pilling. These are not anywhere close to new. These are probably 50 years old, and they're $10. So they're going with me. This 1976 Monkey Chalkware Fisherman is just wrong in so many ways. And he's $9. He may be so bad that he's good. He may come with me as well. You get to the back and then you see it's progressive. And it's 1976 and they did those freaky alligator bookends that I'm bringing. So I think I got to get this guy. Well, we are in the South and so you're going to see a lot more Royal Crown Cola. They were out of Atlanta just like Coca-Cola, but not as prolific. Let's get these out where we can see them better. So this is a Royal Crown Carrier from the late 40s, early 50s with the six bottles. This is when Royal Crown and Nehi were the same thing. Same company anyway. And this is priced at $125 for the set. RC is definitely popular in the South. I think this is really cool. There's no mark. I don't think who made it's important. It's brass. It's going to be 70s. We see a ton of brass novelties, but I don't see the lighthouse. You can tell by the way it's made with the little tiny set screw that it isn't brand new because they don't do those anymore. Not like that. I'd say this is 40 to 45 years old and it's only $5 and I'm going to take it to Florida. This space has a lot of bottles, Kentucky Derby glasses, Coca-Cola related. They've been here for a very long time. Ever since I first started coming to the mall, they do license plates. All these fun categories that are an attraction to people who maybe are not as inclined towards glass and china and home decor. This is the type of thing that keeps them coming back to a store like this. I like this. These would have been advertising for Sterling beer, in this case, for their Big Mouth bottles. There's a new Big Mouth in town. Sounds like every time I get to an antique store and start recording. What's Will built? Nice to hold and has a big mouth. Hmm, maybe I need to wear these as buttons. These little store placard posters would have been done for the Bicentennial. They're only $2 a piece. I'm going to get them because Sterling beer is something that was made not too far from where I sell in Kentucky, and I think people will like this. These are wooden Kokeshi dolls from Japan, and we see a lot of these that came over after the Second World War and during the occupation years, and sent as novelties well into the 1970s. I do have a gal out in Seattle who's a big collector of these and for $20 for the pair of the 12 inch ones it's actually pretty inexpensive. She might just like those. Never actually saw insulators used this way before but I like them with the Christmas lights in them and this sled had an unfortunate accident with a Christmas tree. 
The flexible flyer sled, by the way, is a 1950s version, and this one's priced at $60. They seem to go between $45 and $65. It used to be you would have found these pretty cheaply, and you might still at estate sales, but this turquoise color in the old Samsonite is particularly desired now. And this dealer has them priced at the going retail right now, which is $79 for the pair. Here's a couple of different chandelier styles that were very popular in the 1960s and 70s that we see coming out of houses and going back into houses now. These are priced at about two and a quarter to two forty-five dollars a piece. And that's pretty much retail price for these, but look at all the prisms. I know a gal who said her mother had her house cleaner clean every single one of those every two weeks. And she was always going through housekeepers. I wonder why. Not sure what gas company Billups was, but Billups had a gas station insert too, and it's $18, not a bad price. Interesting to find an off-brand. A little bit of Boy Scout stuff. People like the Boy Scout stuff from the mid-20th century. They go crazy for this stuff earlier than the Second World War. That's where you get into real value. But I remember when I was in Scouts, that trading and collecting all of these old exposition and campery badges was a fun thing to do. And so there's a lot of these collections in houses where kids grew up and left home. And some of these can have some value, particularly if they're the national jamborees. So take a look at those if you see them out there. This is an old barber shop metal tray for hair washing. I've had these before and sold them to people who are using them as tables for chair side or because they were doing little projects and had a lot of things they could tip it a little bit and then all their beads or sequins or whatever they're working on stay in one place. It's priced at 49. Here's something we see people do with old pieces of furniture, particularly these old chests of drawers and commodes and things that were originally meant for table side and would have had a washstand and pitcher and bowl on them. Well, some folks are just turning them directly into a sink. And it's not a bad way of reusing an old piece of furniture. Again, I always tell people, please pick something that already needs restoration so that you're not destroying a great original. But they have this priced at $3.75 and it's got all the plumbing hookups and it's ready to go. Look at this great snowman candy container. He's just got such a happy face and that sparkly covering on the top. And they have him at 50, which is about what they go for retail. And then there's a bunch of plastic Santas, hard plastic from the 50s. They sell from anywhere from about eight to 10 to sometimes $20. I always like the Santa on skis. He was meant to hold candy. They don't get the respect that they really deserve, considering how stately they are and how they were such an important part of many, many homes for many, many years. But there are some very handsome grandfather clocks here. The one on the left is German from about 1920, and that one is an Ixus. That was a company that was founded by Jakob Schlenker in 1888. I sold one of their pieces before myself for about $8.50, which is what they want for this one. The one in the middle is also German. And these folks offer local pickup or delivery and setup. And setup can, can be important because these really have to be leveled and the weights done exactly properly for the site at which they're setting. Otherwise they don't run properly. This is nice because you can see these are the original weights with the embossed design on them. They're not replacements. And then they've got a bunch of neat wall clocks here as well. We can show you some different varieties. On the left is German from the early 1900s. The center one is German Black Forest Walnut from about 1890. That one's priced at $4.95, and I did sell one for $4.50 recently, so I think their prices are reflecting the market now. This one below it is $2.95, and 
it's just got a really neat design. A lot of people aren't buying clocks these days because people are used to getting all of it off of the computer and everything now, but as a decorative object, these are still really beautiful. Then we have the regulator clock. This one is a later dial, a reproduction from about 1970. You can tell it's a reproduction because it says colonial on the face. And those were definitely later in time. Then they've got a mantle clock, which is the low design. A mission oak clock, and this one is a kitchen clock. That design that's upright is called a kitchen clock. Then there's a mantle clock with the figures. That one's an Ansonia from 1904, priced at 165. And then there's a tombstone clock in the middle. You get the idea of why they call it tombstone. It's actually a Gothic style in that case. And you can hear the lovely sound as one of them is chiming behind me. There's something very homey about that. That's why the people who still love these really enjoy them. My uncle was stationed in the canal zone in the Air Force, and we didn't think much of it because we just figured it always would stay that way. Well, then we ended up ceding the canal zone back to Panama. So now canal zone items are pretty collectible. These late 70s license plates are going to be near the end of our direct involvement in the canal zone running things and they're priced at about $20 each. We've shown Shawnee Corn King and Corn Queen pottery before, but this is by Stanford. This was a different company, and they did a similar thing that looks like corn. The design is a little more elaborate, and the color is not the bright yellow. It's more of a creamy yellow, and the green is not as strong, so you can tell the difference on site if you compare the two. And here's a bunch of 1920s McCoy palm vases. These are not usually marked McCoy, so you have to know it's theirs. But it's a good look. It's from the time of the first Florida land boom when people were going down there and the tropical look became popular in decorating. And they're priced between $38 and $50. There was a time in the 1970s when boxes for bullets became commemoratives. This one is for John Wayne, probably about the time he died in the late 1970s. It's $30 for the box with the cartridges. Some of these specialty boxes are actually worth quite a bit of money, so even if they're only from the 1970s, don't disregard them. They could be worth more than you think. I've heard recently that tab is not being produced anymore, so here's the old tab lighter as a memorial priced at $20. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. They now have a record dealer here. They did not have a record dealer here when I was here before, and it looks like they've got a variety. They've got pop and rock. They've got 50s and 60s. They've got country. They have some of their more unusual ones. Santana Festival, they've got out for $10. There's the Beatles. That one seems to be a retrospective. Brenda Lee, Elvis. Marty Robbins, and he only looks a little like Sonny Bono on that particular cover. Chet Atkins from 1967 priced at $10. And then Dolly's Greatest Hits. She's probably due for another one. She's had some hits since she looked like that. Here's one of these really fun cable car pictures from San Francisco done on velvet in the 1970s and there are lights behind it that light up the trolley windows and the lights on the bridge. So you plug this in and it really glows. They don't have it where I can show you that, unfortunately, but it's a really fun, very kitschy design. It's $85, I think I got 95 for the last one I sold. Unfortunately, it's too late to go see Bobby Darren live. I would have liked to, I always liked his voice. 
Well, here is a dealer that seems to be quitting business or retiring because they have half off through the 30th. So we're going to scan it really quickly and see. Oh, yes, I'm sure that this will come back at some point. These are a lot of fun. They're reprints from the 80s and 90s, but they have the Shirley Temple Paper Dolls, the Zigfield Follies. These would just be fun in the display, and they are vintage now. Well, most of them are. Johnny Cash pictures, but I'm looking to see if they've got anything that's older, because a lot of those are newer pieces. Okay, the yellow vase is 40. This one is assigned Mexican artist in paper mache. That's actually a lot of fun. But they want 35, and I figure if it's half price, then I've got to be able to get at least what they have on the tag. And I just don't think that I necessarily can on those pieces. So this was a design for Columbia Enamelware to help keep them in business. When the enamelware started to get passe, then they started doing designs on it to keep it in the market a little longer. These are not bad. They're 95 each. I think they'd probably sell for that. I do not have room to put them in my car at half price, however. Little Etager. These fashion drawings here might be interesting in a display, but they look a little unfinished. The display case is 235. Yeah. I don't see anything I think I can make money on, but it's always worth looking in a half-off booth because you just never know. One more thing I want to check out is this interesting print here from about 1950. Seems to be sort of a Grecian woman at the Acropolis with a pony. Very strange, but interesting. Done by Harris, it says. And they said they're not hanging it because the back is as cool as the print. So I'm going to bite here and see what's so cool about the back. Oh, and the back is cool. Because the back shows the age because this is put on the back of a Bamberger's ad with all sorts of, I would say, 1954 era. Why do I say so specific? Well, the hair is short and the hemlines are low. And 1954 was a recession year, and hemlines back then used to rise and fall with the economy. Very strange facet of fashion back then. My favorite color is rust. Junkin' Pickin' Paintin'. And I have a feeling that a lot of the folks who come here are, because they are carrying a lot of things that are more for repurposing now. These metal trays were done in Mexico, also enamel work, 1970s era and 80s, and they're pretty festive. People are starting to collect those. And we are in Coca-Cola country. This one is $38. That's about what I get for them. I can't afford it at $85, but that is a really nice done piece of string art. If it had a clock in the bottom, it'd be even better. But they use different kinds of wood, the colors make me think 1960s. They go with the pew behind it very well. And that's in really good shape. These are only $16 for the set. If they were perfect, I'd buy them in a heartbeat, but they're missing some of the gold and you really have to look for that because these Culver made glasses, let's see if we can find a signature on one. Yeah. I know they made these, but sometimes the signature is in the design and sometimes they didn't even get marked. But there it is in really tiny letters, Culver, right at the bottom where the design splits. And if the gold was perfect, those sell for about six to eight dollars a piece now. This is Anchor Hawking's Burple pattern. And this set was very prevalent in the 1950s and 60s. And when I was a little kid, my mom bought the set at Peg's Plunder, her favorite thrift store in Imperial Beach, California. And I think she paid $3, which was stepping up back then. 
Well, now it's $24 for the set, which is actually a pretty good price because it's got a great design. People really like this particular pattern and especially this bowl set. And it's good for Christmas because it's that great forest green color. Well, people are buying the nice furniture here because every time I walk up to a piece, I see a layaway tag on it. And this one's on layaway. It's a four stacker. You may be able to see across the glass that it is rippled and thus the original because glass is a gel and it starts to sag and ripple over time. Very nice glow board and key piece. These usually sell for about 150 to 200 per level now. So I imagine that this probably went for around 750 to 800. And then this is a handsome cabinet down here. Interesting having the drawer on top there. And the shelves are shaped, which is also a little different. This is going to be a Walnut veneer from sometime around 1900. And then next to this, this is a nice display table, kind of a Mission Oak style with the beveled glass panes. And these little things are nice at shows for dealers because you can put stuff in the glass doors and put it up on a table where people can see in it. Maybe not as practical for home use, but Still lots of display space in there. This one's priced at $3.95. It's from about 1910. We see the Siamese Cat TV lamp a lot. That was by Cron of Texas. Well, this Panther is also a TV lamp by them. It's priced at $1.95, but I have to say I never see this one. I think I've maybe seen one other one in all the years I've been doing this. So let's pull it forward so you get a better look. Muscular kitty. A little bit more taxidermy. We've got where the antelope and the deer play on a wall together. And then the bass. The bass is only $50. There's probably room in him. I find that the bass are inexpensive in the south. I think they just catch them a lot here. And I take them to Florida or Washington State and they usually sell for closer to 100 there's a bunch of old signs here that are obviously cool and collectible and worth a few hundred dollars, but I wanted to point out the Plymouth sign in the neon because even though that isn't that old, well, they're out of business, and as soon as something is gone, people want to collect it. There's an accordion missing a few mother-of-pearl key covers, but the banjo is really cool. I find these in the south, and they'll sell for me for three to four hundred dollars for an ordinary one. This case has some very handsome looking celluloid dresser accessories, but what I really liked about it were the apothecary bottles there. They sell for about 30 to 40 a piece, depending on what they're uh, advertising. And then there's a whole bunch of compacts. I wanted to show these because viewers seem to really be enjoying compacts again. I sell compacts better online to my YouTube customers than I do in person these days. And there's a really neat one with all the rhinestones. Those go for 40 or 50. A lot of these are in the 20 to 25 range. The guioche is a good deal at 24. That's that white one. Here we've got a bunch of crocs, because you can't be anywhere in the south without seeing those. But I love what they did with these. Look how they've made them as artware. I, a lot of these are being done in the Carolinas. I know there's an outfit in Georgia that does. But this particular one is... Uh, had a mark from the, gosh, about 40 years ago, and I can't really distinguish who it is, but it was a southern studio. These little pieces are actually made out of part of a china cabinet where they took the side pieces and turned them into two little end tables, which is clever. And then we've got the water cooler with the stripes, always popular at 75. This space has some neat things like the little uh, ink bottles people like the watch case is nice because a lot of people watches were sold separately of cases originally you pick your watch movement and then you'd have them put it in the case so sometimes there's good movements in bad cases so people are looking for better cases army air force observer that second world war the army of course turned the air force into the air force after the second world war and there is a 
neat brass trivet from the 1950s from Williamsburg. Well, I definitely had fun in the land of cotton. I bought some cool stuff. The mall is still going and thriving, and it's nice to see. They've got a lot of vintage stuff. They have a lot of repurposed stuff, and they've definitely got some true antiques as well. So I was happy, and I'll definitely come back again. And I hope you'll come back and see me again, too. I'm George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And thank you very much for coming along. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!